Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Unify RPS, or model number USP RPS, which retails for $399 US. Now, what is this thing exactly? This is basically a redundant power supply, all right? So USP-RPS redundant power supply. The newer Unify devices, such as the UDM Pro that we have right here, as well as the Gen 2 Pro switches, all have this proprietary port in the back, right? So basically, what Ubiquiti has done here is in lieu of having redundant power supplies on this enterprise grade equipment, they have a single AC power supply on the back right here, and then they have this RPS port. Okay, and the RPS port allows for the USP RPS to provide that redundant power that's missing out of the box from this device. But instead of having to have redundant power supplies in every single one of your devices, you can buy one of these USP RPSs, which can power up to six of the uh, UDM Pros or the Gen 2 Pro switches. So I think these are the only two devices, so the UDM Pro as well as the Gen 2 Pro switches that have this RPS port that can be backed up by the USP RPS. Uh, there are likely other devices coming though, and I think there are even some that are already in the early access store uh, that can use uh, or utilize this device. Now you think about the cost, I'm gonna get this thing unboxed. You think about the cost of that, right? And it's an interesting decision by Ubiquiti because adding a redundant power supply uh, is going to cost money. It's gonna add money to the UDM Pro, it's gonna add money to the, it's gonna add costs to the uh, Gen 2 switches. So what they've done is they've basically taken the cost, the extra money that you would pay for a redundant power in each individual device and they've sort of encapsulated it into this one device, which is interesting. I mean, it's an interesting way to if you're fully bought into the Ubiquiti infrastructure, this is probably more cost effective to do redundant power this way than it would be to have redundant power on every single device that needs it. And at the same time, for those people who don't care about or don't want redundant power on their devices, like for instance, if all you have is a UDM Pro, you don't necessarily wanna pay the extra money for a redundant power supply on the UDM Pro you have the option of just not buying the RPS, right? So, all right, so inside the box, we have another box. Uh, this looks to be our cables, I think, yeah. Oh, wow. Woo, look at the thick cable this thing comes with. Do we just get one of these? I might have to buy more of these. Okay, so here's the RPS cable. It looks to be about a three foot cable, and it is just thick thick gauge cable. This is their proprietary cable. That's pretty awesome. Uh, then we have a power cable for the RPS and we have some rack mount ears and a little quick start guide. Here's the RPS itself. All right, it's pretty hefty. Definitely a hefty unit. All right, there we go. There is the unit itself. So what do we have here? We have the same 1.3 inch touchscreen display that comes on the UDM Pro as well as the Gen 2 Pro switches. And then we have an ethernet port. That's all there is on the front. Uh, and then a little reset hole, of course. Uh, on the back, we've got our six RPS ports that are made for this uh, cable to connect the redundant power. And yeah, it looks like you only get one of these cables, so I'm gonna have to look up the price on these. I, When I set this thing up, I'm gonna want at least one additional of these cables, because uh, I do have two of these Pro devices. Uh, you've got three pretty beefy fans here on the back, and then we have, of course, our standard Molex power connector. Let's pop the case and take a look inside. All right, here is a look inside the USP RPS. Uh, all the way over here, we can see this little board that controls the 1.3 inch touchscreen right there. Uh, then we've got this shroud here with the Ubiquiti logo on it. This is where all of the power takes place. All of the power components are underneath here, and you can tell that's what gets hot as well because the only three fans in this case are basically for uh, just whatever is underneath this shroud here. Then we have this board here which is the actual RPS connectors. There's three on top and then three on this bottom board below. 
And then the uh, this interesting thing right here, look at this. So the Ethernet connection here terminates to this board right here. And then they just have a straight up Cat6 cable <laughs> connecting the two. And that's a pretty thick cable, but yeah, that's how they're running the uh, connection over from this board here to this board here, the Cat6 cable. And then also whatever uh, this wire right here does, which I assume is probably power maybe? It's either power or some sort of monitoring. Uh, that goes from uh, this little board over to the main board of the RPS. And there you have it, pretty simple device. setup of the USP RPS is super simple. It just has a single cat uh, RJ45 Ethernet jack on the front that you just plug into your network. If your Unify controller is on the same network as the USP RPS, it should pick it up automatically and then you can just click adopt and it will adopt the USP RPS and update the firmware. The touchscreen display works very similarly to the way that it does in the switches, the pro switches that have the same 1.3 inch touchscreen display. Uh, so I'm not gonna go over that in this video. It's basically, it'll show you the power output of any of the ports that are connected uh, to the RPS in the back here. So speaking of the back, let's take a look at the back side. Setting up the RPS cable, this is the USP dash cable is the model number. These are $29 each for these cables. It comes with one. Setting up the USP RPS cable was actually a little bit disconcerting because it's very difficult to plug in. There is a line that is printed on this cable and in the documentation for this device, it says that the line must be hidden when it's fully plugged in. So you plug it in and it seems like it's in all the way, but the line is still visible on the outside. You really have to cram it in to get it to connect properly. But once it is seated properly, uh, you can see here that we have blue lights on port one of our RPS down here, and we have a blue light next to the 24 port pro switch that it is powering. Now let's go ahead and perform a test here. We are going to yank the power out of our 24 port switch. There we go. I can hear something happened in the RPS. You can actually hear a little bit of noise, additional noise when I did that. And then let's go around the front, and here you can see PSU failure. So we can see RPS is activated. And if we come down here to the RPS touchscreen display, if we click on the RS, RPS ports and look at port one, we can see that it says it's delivering power. Uh, 12 volts, it says 10 of 30 watts. 54 volts says zero of 400 watts. So basically it just means that it's powering 10 watts out of 30 watts of this uh, switch that is currently down. And let's go ahead and plug the power cord back in and see how long it takes to fail back. All right, power cord's going in in three, two, one, in. There you go. So about four seconds later, it detects that the power's back in and it is back on the AC power. Here we can see the USP RPS in Unify. I've got it over here in the corner. It adopted, no problem. It updated the firmware, no problem. And I am currently on version 5.12.72. This is running off of my Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. If we click on the USP RPS, here we can see an overview that shows us which ports are connected if we hover over one of those connected ports, we can see the current power draw, which is basically next to nothing when the USP RPS is not actually actively being used to power any of these devices. We can see that the 12 volt range shows 0 0.005 amps uh, right now. Then if we open up power utilization, this is pretty interesting. We can hover over the 12V1 uh, backup and it tells us the peer that's connected, uh, the MAC address, it says it's a USW Pro 24 PoE. It tells us the total power required by that switch, etc. Power utilization, as well as some of the temperatures of the device. If we click on ports, we can edit the power ports and basically just change their name. So for instance, I might wanna call this USW-Pro-24-PoE. 
And then we have the RPS port mode where we can just set it to auto or we can completely disable that RPS port if we wanted to do that for some reason. Under settings, we have the alias, so I can call this USP RPS. And then we have the settings for the actual 1.3 inch touchscreen. If you wanted to add tags, those would be here. And then basically all of the standard Unify stuff, like the ability to forget this device or move it to another site or whatever you wanted to do with it. So not much to this device in Unify, but let's see what it looks like when we actually pull the power on that 24 port pro switch. Uh, so let's actually see what happens in Unify when we do that. All right, so I pulled the power on the 24 port switch. I'm sure an alert was generated. Let's check that out. Yep, so here we see uh, RPS is, oh, that was actually my last alert. I might have to, it hasn't refreshed this alert yet, but here is the event notification that shows up. RPS is delivering power on port one. Connected device has internal power supply failure or loss of an AC. It also does send out an email uh, alert, as you can see here. So from my Unify controller, RPS peer device power lost, and it actually tells me the name of the device. This is before I set the name in Unify, so it'll probably actually say the actual name now that I've set that uh, within Unify on the port. And if we go back to our USP RPS, we now see this little uh, power icon on port number one, and we can see that the state says power delivering, and the current has gone from 0 0.005 amps to 0.905 amps. So there you have it. Again, the device does what it's supposed to. Oh, let me go plug that back in. So the device does what it's supposed to. There aren't really a ton of bells and whistles with this thing, but that's not what you're paying for. You're paying for basically a redundant power system. How though do you make this a true redundant power system? Okay, so here is a very simple Visio mock-up of what a truly redundant power setup would be would look like and how you're kind of accounting for all of the different uh, ways that a device can fail. Because with these switches, you're really protecting against two different things with these, uh, you know, with the RPS solution. Number one, you're protecting against the failure of the power adapter or power supply of any of the individual switches or devices that are connected to the RPS, right? So you're mitigating against actual an actual hardware problem with the PSU that is in a 48 port switch, for example. You're also mitigating power outages, right? So if something happened to this circuit over here, you would want this circuit over here to be able to pick up the slack. Now, if you are lucky enough to be in an area where you can actually have two separate circuits from two different power grids, that's even better, but still, this is pretty good, right? So what we have here are two different power circuits. We've got circuit one and circuit two. Circuit one goes into a UPS, a battery backup, that is only powering our USP RPS. Circuit two also goes into a battery backup and that battery backup is powering all of these devices here. And again, this, there's some variants here. This is just a very simple mock-up. You might not wanna put all of those switches on a single UPS, for example, but you guys get the idea. So we have a battery backup of these switches here. So if say this bottom switch, if first of all, if the power goes out to circuit two, you have your battery backup. If the battery backup then goes out because the power failure lasts a really long time, you've got the secondary battery backup over here and the USP RPS that's gonna take over power from a second circuit, which may or may not have lost power. Okay, so that's sort of mitigating against power failure. There's a lot of levels of you know battery backup that you can go through before you're actually down down, right? The power would have to be out for a long time. The other thing is if say this bottom switch uh, if its power supply go dies, right? In that case, you would have the USP RPS just able to power it as a secondary power source, right? So those are the problems that you're trying to mitigate. And if you guys want me to make this diagram available to you, uh, let me know down in the comments and I'm happy to do that. So one more discussion that we need to have, and that discussion is about pricing for this thing, right? So the device itself is $399. It comes with one of the USP dash cable you know, those thick uh, RPS cables. 
you, if you wanted to buy five of those, so if you were gonna power up six devices that this thing is capable of powering up, you'd need the USB RPS plus five additional cables at $29 each. That comes out to a total of $544. I personally think this is pretty smart on Ubiquiti's uh, side, right? Because if you're a consumer and you're gonna buy one of these pro switches, it's up to you, the consumer, to decide whether or not you wanna add the redundant power, but you are not penalized for buying the Pro Switch by Ubiquiti, automatically giving you a secondary, you know, a second hot swap power supply or something already built into the device, right? That's gonna make the device price shoot way up, right? If you put redundant power into a switch, that's a $2,500 switch, right? So if you go online and look at, you know, Juniper, Aruba, uh, Huawei, however you say that, all of those switches that are out there, I, I did a little bit of research in this, not a comprehensive look, I did a little bit of research into this, and those vendors, to get their 24 port redundant power supply with like the hot swappable redundant power supply, those are $2,500 and up for those switches, right? And that's not counting any sort of licensing agreements or anything that those companies might also have on top of that, right? So this is a nice solution. So if you took the UPS, USP RPS plus five additional cables plus six of the 48 port pro switches, the total cost is going to be $7,138. That's MSRP. If you got six, say, Aruba switches or Juniper switches that had redundant hot swap power supplies at $2,500 each, uh, that's for the 24 port version, they're even higher. You're looking at more than $15,000 for that setup. Okay, so you can do a lot of arguing about, yeah, well, those have layer three. Well, these, you know, pro switches have some layer three features in them, you know, so they're not really true, maybe layer three switch. Maybe they're not quite as enterprise as those other switches. But if you're not in the enterprise market and you just want a good switch solution that has redundant power, like if you have a pretty mission critical application that you want to keep these six switches alive all the time, this is a really cost effective solution. And there might be other cost effective solutions out there also, you know, put those down in the comments below if you guys have something that would be, you know, provides redundant power to all of your devices and costs less than $7,138 for six 48 port switches with redundant power, all right? I'd love to hear about that down in the comments below. There are some other options. Like, so for instance, this small little micro tick that I have, this is the CRS305-1G-4S plus IN. It's like a four port, you know, gigabit, 10 gig SFP micro tick switch. This one has, you know, two DC powers in the back. So I'm sure a lot of the Mikrotik stuff probably has redundant power like that. Uh, but it's also, I mean, you can argue whether this is enterprise or not, right? You could also argue whether Unify is enterprise or not. But to me, the model of how they're doing the redundant power, which by the way, Cisco does the same thing. Cisco also has an RPS solution that's very similar to this, but again, a lot more expensive, right? So... I don't know, it's it's a cool solution. Like I like these and if we were, we don't do a ton of the sort of higher enterprise or like large business, uh, you know, uh, uh, projects. We, we mostly are in like the small to medium sized business arena. But if we were doing larger projects where we had like four or five 48 port switches in Iraq, I think it's worth $544 for the USP RPS and you know, some of those cables to make sure that you have redundant backup power. Assuming though, of course, that you're not just plugging all of that into a single circuit or a single UPS, you know, you really wanna kind of design it for redundancy as I showed in that video. All right, so there you guys have it. What do you think about the USP RPS? Put that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click subscribe. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.